We're going to start this weekend with a very quick review of Reiki 1. of the first degree. And that's going to help you to recall some of the information that you learned in Reiki 1, get a little bit of practice and a little bit of energy. And after our review and practice, we're going to move right into Reiki 2 skills. So I probably, I'm going to say that it's going to take us maybe an hour or so, maybe an hour and a half to go through the review and practice. And then right after that, we'll go to lunch, come back, and we'll get into second degree skills. So second degree. John used to say, second degree is the most important class in Reiki, even more important than mastership. And the reason is because this is really the bridge between the beginning levels of Reiki and the master level. So it's a very important class. You're going to be getting some skills this weekend that will forever change your life. More than the first one. Even more than the first one. This is actually the most powerful workshop of all. We'll begin with the three keys of Reiki. And the three keys or symbols are as follows. The first key is for more power. I'm going to underline more because it is a lot more energy now. <clears throat> Think of first degree as 20%, just 20%. So what you're doing right now is just 20%. We're going to open you up this weekend to a hundred percent. So you're going to be channeling 80% more than you are right now. You'll be able to do what you do now in a fraction of the time. And if you choose to spend the same amount of time with a client, it's going to be a lot more energy. Okay, Takara used to say, first degree, 24 horsepower, Second degree, 100 horsepower, very powerful, and it is, it's very powerful. The second key is for mental, emotional healing. And it, oops, I'm in a mess. Let's see, mental. Can you see that, guys? Yeah. OK, thank you. And it's a communications <coughs> energy. This symbol is an energy all its own. It's very powerful. It's almost like telepathy. You, are you familiar with telepathy, mm -hmm. where you can communicate with another person or animal? without using your voice. Well, the second symbol is almost like telepathy. And you'll be able to communicate with the person's mental, emotional side of the condition. Even a physical condition, even an injury, has a mental and spiritual and emotional side. So you're going to be able to address that in any condition. No, nope, I'm going to teach you exactly how. No, they don't. Because it's going beyond the conscious mind. You do not use the conscious mind for this type of communication. It's going to go from your higher self to their higher self. And I'm going to talk about what that is later. So the communication bypasses the conscious mind completely. So they do not need to be aware of it consciously. The higher self is like a filter we have. We all have a higher self. And this filter protects us from anything entering our energy field that is undesirable. And I'll tell you all about the higher self later and how it protects you. You are gonna go in the car in a minute. <laughs> no whining, uh-uh, uh-uh. Here, you want this one? Okay. 
good. Thank you. Okay. The third symbol is for absent treatments. And with this symbol, you'll be able to help anyone or anything from a foot away to a million miles away. In Reiki, there's no such thing as time and space. So you'll be able to help anyone, including yourself, across time and space. And this symbol is so sensitive that as we work with it, you'll be able to feel the person as if the person were really underneath your hands. You'll be able to feel the energy flow going in, in the body. You'll be able to feel general physical vitality, energy in the chakras, zings, as if they were there. Energetically, they are. Do They're there. Sense, like, be laying down, sitting down still? Mm, no, I'm going to teach you exactly how to do it, and you're going to practice. So by the time that you leave tomorrow night, you're going to be able to work with these symbols beautifully. You'll be able to do all the second degree skills beautifully let me at 100 percent we'll start opening you up this afternoon to 100 percent and we'll do two attunements okay hmm? yes two attunements we'll give you one attunement tonight okay and another attunement tomorrow night, and that will bring you up to 100%, okay? Now, so this is how the flow will go. When you come back from lunch, you will learn the three keys. We'll practice drawing the symbols, okay? And you'll learn how to draw the symbols. And we'll practice probably for about an hour, okay? And after we practice drawing the symbols, I'm going to show you how to use the symbols on a table. We'll put a table out, and probably David will be my beautiful professional model. I'll show you on David how to use the symbols. There's very specific ways of using the symbols, and I'll teach you how to do uh, the symbols. So we'll practice. Okay. And uh, first draw them, then practice the symbols, and we'll practice with the power symbol, we'll practice a little bit with the mental symbol, at least activating the mental symbol. You learn how to activate the mental symbol. And we're going to leave the absent treatment symbol practice for tomorrow afternoon, because we're going to have a whole big practice around that symbol. Okay? And I'll tell you more about it in a minute. So we'll practice the symbols on the table. And then you're going to learn one more thing, and it's called the opening, closing, spiral. And this spiral is for opening the chakras to the energy. So you're going to learn how to open the chakras like a flower, and then leave the chakras open so that you can deliver your session, and at the end of the session, I'll teach you the closing spiral, not to close down the chakras, but to seal the energy in the aura. And the net result is that your sessions are going to be a lot more powerful with this technique. When John learned this technique, his success rate went way, way up. So I want to pass this on to you so that you can also improve your success rate. Yes, I have a question. Yes, Kay. Yes. Mm-hmm. And then I learned this this weekend. I come back to them the following Wednesday, as I come in Wednesday. Will they feel like a dramatic difference? Mm-hmm. Okay. It'll be a lot stronger. Okay. It'll be wonderful. Not that Reiki 1 is not wonderful. It is. It's wonderful. But this is a lot more powerful. Okay. Yes. And your Reiki 1 is, is great. This is... Please do not get me wrong. Reiki 1 is very powerful, but this will bring you up to 100% all the way. And they'll be able to feel it. Oh, yeah. So if Lisa did Reiki on me right now, I would feel great. But if you did on me, I'd feel fabulous. 
And when you give yourself either self-treatment or you work on each other tomorrow night, you'll feel fabulous. You'll have that too. No. David, would you please do me a favor and put Mickey in the car? Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Here. David, here, I don't know if it's open. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, now, before you go home tonight, you're going to receive the first attunement, the first of two second degree attunements. And then I'll send you home with homework. Guess what? We have homework in this class. So you'll have some homework. And then when you come back tomorrow morning, we're going to first do a meditation. And after the meditation, we're going to learn to use the mental emotional symbol. Okay. Today you're going to learn how to draw it and how to turn it on. There's a specific way of turning it on. But tomorrow, I'm going to spend the whole morning with you teaching you seven techniques to use the symbol. So we'll spend the entire morning with the symbol. And you'll ask questions and I'll give you examples on how to apply the symbol for any situation. Okay? So by the time that the morning is over, you'll really know how to use that mental emotional symbol. Okay? After I teach you how to use it, then I'm, I want to go over the intake with you. We went over the intake, the Reiki intake, very, very briefly in first degree. Now I want to spend a little bit more time with you and talk about the it, type of information that you should be collecting in an intake. How do you explain Reiki to uh, people that are not familiar with Reiki? And some of the other particulars that are important as you set up your professional Reiki practice. So we're going to spend some time on that. And then, so I'm just going to call it intake. And then we'll go to lunch. And when we come back from lunch, we're going to practice all the new second degree skills that you have learned. So everything activating the symbols, giving a mental emotional, doing an intake, the giving a, uh, using the mental emotional symbol in a session, all of that. We're gonna set up the tables and we're gonna practice and practice and practice, okay? And once we're done with the practice, then we're going to work with the absent treatment symbol. We'll put the tables away. And uh, tonight before you go home, we're going to have a raffle. And I'm going to have some straws, some special straws of the Nile. These are straws of the Nile, Staples tree of the Nile, you know, directly from Staples Keen, that kind of a tree. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> but the purpose of the drawing is uh, to select three of you to find someone in your life that need an absent treatment. So three of you will get to choose someone and bring that information about that someone to us tomorrow. And then when we're doing the practice with the absent treatment symbol, the absent treatment uh, sessions, we'll work with those people that you have selected as a group and we will do the healing. And I'll give you all the rules a little later the sort of information that you should be bringing, whether or not you need permission from that person, all of that will go into a lot of detail later. And then we'll end up the class with the second of the second degree attunement, 
bringing your energy all the way up to 100%. And then we'll have a graduation celebration. How about that? And the birthday party. Uh, whose birthday? Ah! <laughs> Happy birthday! <laughs> Wonderful. Okay, so remember... <laughs> Are you, are you comfortable, David? How about if you move a little bit toward, toward your feet? Just a couple of inches. Wonderful. Thank you. And I'll take uh, some tissue. Hmm? Reiki me? Sure. Sure. Yes, you can use that term. Yeah. I got Reiki. Or I got reiki <laughs> Sure. Okay. Yes. Got Reiki. Got Reiki. Okay. Assume that you have already conducted a, an intake, and I'm not going to go into it now since I will be going into a lot of detail tomorrow. And that uh, you've gotten permission to touch, that you've made your client comfortable. Are you comfortable, David? Most. Wonderful. Thank you. And that he's removed eyeglasses, hearing aids, shoes, anything in pockets that can pinch, like a keys and pens and things like that. Remove them from the pocket. Now, say to your client, I'm going to check the outside of your body. Don't get into a lot of detail about checking the aura and checking the chakras. Some people do not understand and it can be a little bit disconcerting to be told that your chakra is going to be checked. So use common sense and if appropriate then do, you know, do explain but if the person is unfamiliar with energy work just say I'm going to check the outside of your body first and then I'll start the session. Okay? And most people will say okay sensitize your hands. Now in this class, when you sensitize your hands, I want you to do this. I want you to first move away from the table so that you're sensitizing your hands away from the aura. And then I like you to just feel the energy between your hands and then test and feel the energy in the aura and come back, step back a little bit so that you can get that feeling again of what the subtleties are of just feeling energy in your hands and feeling energy in the aura and then feeling energy in the chakras and there is a difference so the way to learn the difference is by practicing away from the table energy just the energy of your hands energy in the room because there's energy in the room okay and then step into the aura, and boy, right away, I could tell the difference, okay? Energy in the aura, and then go over the chakra and feel the chakra. The key the aura is Mm-hmm. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to check the height of the aura. And here I go, coming right over the heart chakra, and then David is way out here already. And here he is and he's way up here. And that's very good vitality, that's excellent. Okay, once you feel the height of the aura, you know that that is a measure for general physical vitality. The higher it is from the physical body, the higher the person or animal's general physical vitality. The closer it is to the body, then the lower the vitality. This is in the good range, really, really good range. Okay, in the bad range would be anything under 10 inches. Yes, Kay. Three questions. First one, the first, if, if, it's, if it's like towards the evening hours and you're sort of closer because the energy level is mm -hmm. down, is that okay to be a little bit closer? Yeah, exactly. Like, yes, you can. Okay, but if it's like morning, afternoon, and it's like here, then there's an issue. But if it's like evening, you want to go to bed. If the person, ask the person, are you tired? Okay. And the person may say, yes, I'm really tired. Okay. Okay. And it will vary because remember that the aura is like a balloon. The energy in the aura is like a balloon that expands. The energy expands the balloon. 
and the more energy we have, the more inflated the balloon. So that's what you're feeling for the balloon around the body. Now, um, this goes over the heart, right? Over because the that's the highest point when a person is lying down. Okay. It's egg-shaped. Well, it depends on where you were. If you were, like one of you was here, and the other one was here, and the other one was here, then you were all correct because the aura slopes down like an egg. Okay. okay, so you were correct. But if you were exactly over the same spot, what one of you or two of you were probably doing uh, was to be a little bit into the aura. So you want to go f find that very first layer where you feel the difference. So for instance, let me do it again with David. And I got it. I mean, his energy is so high. Okay, he's right here. So this is the very top or layer that I can feel. It, I can go a little bit below it, but I will already have been in the aura. So check again and feel for the difference between just air and then the aura. The aura is a little thicker. So feel for that thickness. Where does it start? Does that make sense? Okay, good. All right. So what I'd like to do is have you check for the height of the aura again, and then select your scanning hand. And let's select the other scanning hand. So if you selected your right hand last weekend, if you were here last weekend, you selected your right hand, Let's select the left, and let's train the left this time. And Eric, I don't know if you remember which hand you selected. Oh, I remember the flash very well. <laughs> okay, so select the other hand so that you can practice with the other hand. And every time you scan, then use the hand that you selected today for scanning. When you're delivering Reiki, you'll have both hands on the body. Is that okay? All right. So now that you selected your hand, I'd like you to go through the chakra scanning exercise, starting with, which uh, chakra is this? Crown. Crown. And? Third eye. Brow, or third eye, both names are right. And? Throat. throat. And remember how we found the apex of the throat chakra by using a couple of fingers? And it's like a magnetic attraction or, or repulsion? Okay, so do the same thing. Remember, chakras are about an inch and a half in diameter. And the next chakra is? Heart. And remember, you're passing all the way through and back. And? Solar plexus. And this time I want you to start looking for evenness. Is there a chakra that feels stronger or weaker? Are you feeling areas that are uneven? and start noticing for, uh, for that. Keep your hand at about the same height so that that's not a factor. And you're just feeling for differences. Does it feel cooler? Does it feel weaker? Does it feel empty? So notice what it feels like to you. And this chakra is? Root. Root. And remember that your hand will be at a 45 degree angle. You are going to uh, start with this class oh, okay. when you do the opening spiral. Okay, yeah. Okay. Now you're going to check one knee at a time. And you may want to just feel for the kneecap and then feel the other kneecap. So locate the kneecaps, then lift your hand above the kneecap and rotate your hand. And compare one knee to the other. And this has to do with brain dominance. Is this person right brain or left brain dominant? Remember that the hemispheres of the brain cross over to control the opposite side of the body. So if you're getting a very strong left knee, you can 
assume that the person is right brain dominant. If you get in the opposite, then the person would be left brain dominant. And that's just how they process information. Okay, and we'll talk more about it when we get into the intake and taking a good intake. This information can be very helpful to you. So I'm going to go back and talk about it then. Okay? Okay. Then you have the feet, and it's okay to move around the table, so don't be shy. In this class, I really want to see you move about, okay, with confidence. Move around the table, come to the end of the table, and feel for underneath the arch. That's where the subchakra is located. This is the foot subchakra. Then the same on this foot. And you're comparing one foot to the other, which one is stronger. And these subchakras have to do with our spiritual walk. Is this person more spiritual, more um, artistic, creative? That would be the uh, left foot. Is that the path the person is following? Or is this person more into the affairs of the world, getting ahead in business? You know, uh, very good with mathematics, for instance, with logic. That would be the right foot. Does the feet correlate with the knees? Yes. Yes. So if you're like left knee, would you be left foot? But not all the time. Oh. Because you can have someone who is very right brain dominant, who is very creative and sensitive and artistic, living a very left brain life in a very left brain career and that usually creates stress in the body and I want to talk about what you can do with Reiki to help in a situation like that because now we can really help you're going to be able to talk to the body you're going to be able to talk to the higher self with the techniques you, that you're going to learn in this class so you can be very helpful when there's that kind of imbalance Okay, so after you finish scanning the chakras, then you're going to look for zings. And again, move away from the table. Sensitize your hands. Feel the energy in the room. The energy in the aura. And then come in a little closer. Remember, we're going to divide the body into sections. And the sections are about shoulder width apart. Your shoulder width apart and they go outside the body, it's like a rectangle. And this is one section, and another section, and another section, and another section, okay? And another section. And the number of sections depends on the size of the person. So come back to the first section, and run your hand as a comb, as if you were coming through a warm tub of water, and when you feel something that is not smooth, it could be pins and needles, a thickness, a wave, like waviness, um, static electricity, a, a pocket of heat, you know, something warm or something cold, make a note of it because that's telling you that there's a little imbalance underneath. And for David, he feels pretty good, but I'm feeling a little something right over here and it could be from the back of the body so you will always want to present that as a question not a statement you're not diagnosing nor prescribing so be careful not to do that but as a question very neutral and it could be something from the back and uh, or from the back of the neck or top of the shoulder okay or it could be from the front and most of the time it's something very very minor so is there any tension on the back of your shoulders here, Nothing front of the neck? Nerve. Okay, so. Did some snow shoveling this morning. So ah, that. okay, it could be that, it could be that. So it could be something that's going on right now. It could also be something from the past that has healed but left a scar in the aura. Okay, and did you, so ask, did you ever have a problem here? On the back, no? Or it could be something that maybe he's not noticing yet, something that is in the energy field that hasn't manifested. And just like um, everything else, uh, problems manifest in the body in the order of manifestation, meaning first in the energy field, even before there are any symptoms, and then in the physical body. So there's already a shift in the energy field before something becomes present in the body, and it could be that you're wrong, okay? So you don't want to ever alarm your client. 
and it's probably just from the uh, shoveling a little bit mm -hmm. and then come to the next section and I'm getting a little something that's my back that's your back mm -hmm. okay No, no, I would say. So that way they don't manifest it and they can take care of it before. Yeah, what you're going to do is give it Reiki. So right now you're collecting information and this helps you gather additional information from what your client told you during the intake. So let's say that I feel a little something here and he doesn't know what it is, okay? What I want you to do is what John used to do and he would give it energy. So he would do position one and position two and give it maybe five minutes of energy. And then at the end of the five minutes, he would come over the area again and many times it would be gone. If it persists, if, it, if it's really stuck there, then I'm going to teach you a technique in advanced second degree that will, find, that will help you find breaks in the energy field and repair them. Okay, and you're going to be able to locate these breaks. You see, we have an eight, eight, uh, astral matrix. So the aura is surrounded by a net of energy. It's like a fisherman's net. And sometimes there's a break in the net. And when there is this break, then the energy can become all clogged up or it just escapes. Okay, and I'm going to teach you how to find it. And then using the Reiki energy, you're going to learn how to reweave the astral matrix, and that is going to come in advance second. That's at the end of March. Okay. So when you take that class, you'll be able to, you know, to test very quickly, and it's very quick. You'll do the test, and you'll be able to say right away, yes, there is a break, or no, there's no break, and it was just my imagination. Or, yes, there's a break, I'm going to repair it, I'm going to feel it, give it some energy, feel it, and most of the time it'll be gone. Whatever was there in the energy field will be gone because you have repaired the, the structure, okay? If it persists, then you may want to say to your client, you know, you may want to check next time that you go see your medical practitioner, just, uh, you know, just check this area, okay? When, when you're doing the scanning and you're talking about giving the energy, are you talking about stopping the scanning process and giving energy then, or are you talking mentally keep it and then? Mentally keep it. Remember where you found the, the breaks, and when you start the session, then, uh, then address it. Give it a little bit more energy. And while you're giving the session, test it again. Check it again. And many times it will be gone. Whatever was there will be gone. Good question, Sean. Okay. Okay, so next uh, I'm going to the next sec section and I always recommend that you sensitize your hands before you move to the next section. And now, and I'm picking up a little bit more of what I picked up over here. So uh, is that your back again, this whole area? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. And moving down and I'm getting the same thing. So it's just traveling in the aura mm -hmm. and just getting a little thicker through this area. Okay, okay. yes. What are you feeling? Mm -hmm. I'm feeling a thickness and I'm feeling like, like ticks on my fingers, like this. That's what I feel on my right finger. Yeah, like little ticks, but very, very subtle, ethereal. And it's different on everybody, everybody. You'll have your, yeah, you'll have your own perception but it feels like that, like I'm having little little ticks like that. And I'm getting another one right here on the leg. No, it could be from the back. Yeah. Nothing around the knees, right? I'm sorry? Knees, nothing going on? Well, I stand all day, so it gets tired. And okay. Sometimes the position I'm standing in Yeah, you, you scan the whole body because this helps you collect additional information that you can use during the session. So you want to go across the body? Yeah, you want to work down. You want to go across the body in this direction, one section at a time, and then 
come down to the next section, so like this. In the of the body. Yes, you you go in the direction that the aura flows. So you want to go from the top down, and then pick up your hand, so that you're not brushing the energy backwards. Pick up your hand, and then come back, and your fingers make up the teeth of this comb, energy comb, and pick up again and just inch your way across a little bit at a time an inch at a time okay all right now i'm going to start the first pattern look for the end of the breastbone and that mid sagittal line and place my hands in the upper left abdominal quadrant so here my thumbs touch my fingertips are on the midline Sure. David, can I touch yeah. you, please? Yes. So, see, I keep thinking when I'm doing this mm -hmm. that I don't want to be on here, and so I keep going down a little more, and then I'm like, no, no, no and then there's not enough room. And so you want to, uh, good, good, Sean. I'm glad that you, uh, you asked, because you are covering the lower ribs. Okay. Just make sure that you're not above the cyphoid process. <laughs> you're not above the tip of the sternum, but you do cover the lower ribs. So is it, is it a good um, perception to kind of line your, your pinky up with the bottom yes. of the... Yes, yes, mm -hmm. I have it right there. I'm pinky careful not to be poking against mm -hmm. it, but I'm noticing that I am no, I'm not any higher than the end of the bre breastbone. Okay. okay. Okay, so we're working on the stomach, pancreas, part of the diaphragm, part of the liver, and the spleen. Now I'll move to the second position, one hand at a time, gently and slowly. And the second position is identical to the first. <coughs> and that way I do not break the connection. And we have the rest of the diaphragm, liver, and the gallbladder in this position. Position number three, take the hand attached to your shoulder, closest to the person's head, move that hand first by lifting, making an underpass, placing the hand at the beginning of position number three, and then moving all the way into position number three. Number three is a long pad with an overlap. So you want to have this overlap. And you're over part of the um, uh, small intestines, okay, and transverse colon in this position. Number four, lift either by the heel of the hand or by the fingertips, but lift your hands as a unit. Okay, either way is fine. So lift the hands as a unit. Make a V, so make a swivel here and come down. So you have a V position <coughs> with the apex of the V right over the center of the body. You don't want to be off to the side. Be right over the center. You are working over the ascending, descending colon, small intestines, female reproductive organs, the bladder, and the male prostate gland. Number five is on the hip joint. So take one hand at a time and bring it down to the hip joint. You don't even need to change the hand angle. Just bring the hand down. <coughs> I'm going to bring my left hand down to the right hip and my right hand down to the left. And I want to make sure that I'm, I am on the hip joint. I don't want to be into the groin area. I'm on the hip joint here. So are you going down as far as like the, the outer part of the bone? Or yes. Okay. Yeah. And if you're not sure where your hands should be, ask permission to raise the, the knee. Look for the crease. See where the crease is? And that's where your hands should be. 
Okay, so here we have the hip joint itself and energy flow to the legs. In addition, we have lymph nodes in this area. Number six is a T position for a lady, hands together for a man. Take the hand, attach to the shoulder, farthest away from the head, place the hand on the breastbone, and then come around and use your other hand as the crossbar of a T. It's a T position for a lady. And hands together over the center of a chest for a man. Remember, if, you're ever, if you ever need to treat the breast itself, let me go get a, a pillow. Just a second. Okay, this is a little chill. Yes, B. Do you ever get tired of performing your cancer No, because I'm getting energized. A little bit of the energy is staying with me, so you feel better after giving a session than when you started. What I may want to do is lower the table and sit down. And when I work uh, privately, I usually lower the table a little bit more and I sit down. Because I usually do more than one session at a time. Yes, Sean. One more question about the, the sixth position. When you're coming up here, are you mm -hmm. going as high as the hollow here? Or you you want to be below, below the hollow. That? You want to be right below the collarbone. Otherwise, you're going to be into the neck area, and that can be uncomfortable. Good question. Okay. Now, for a woman, if she has problems on the chest, let's say breast cancer or, or lung cancer or heart disease or anything serious with the lungs, you want to create four optional positions for the chest, okay? And use a barrier for modesty. The barrier could be a folded blanket or pillow or towel, and then place the barrier right over the area that needs the energy, okay? And then come over, and this would be 6A, so you're working on one side of the chest, And come on over to the other side. And do 6B on the other side. And you will do the walking very carefully around the person so that you do not break up the energy flow. Then do 6C by placing one hand over the lateral ribs. So one hand is here, the other hand is tucked, tucked right against the armpit. Let's see if everybody can see that. Can the camera see that as well? Can you change the angle a bit so that you can see that? Got it? Okay. Let's see something. Okay. In that position, are you basically doing a long type of an overlap? Yep. Or you, you, you want to have an overlap. You want the hands to be a continuous unit. So one hand here. Can you see that, Monica? Yeah. And then the other hand right against the armpit. And see how the hands overlap? Mm -hmm. Everybody? Can you see that, Monica? Yes. Yeah. And this is for women that are having issues in that area? Is it for women? Or for men. And for anyone that has issues like, uh, like cancer. You know, cancer somewhere oh, on the chest. Asthma. All asthma, stuff. emphysema, bronchitis, the flu any serious problem on the chest, okay? So you wanna get to it. 
and get right into the, that area. You are getting the organs from the side and you're getting the lymph nodes from the side, okay? No, these are extra positions, extra positions. You would only use these extra positions when there's, there are problems there. Because one position, number six, is not enough to address serious problems on the chest. So make these up. And if you come over here, see how I'm, uh, I, I'm moving out? Mm -hmm. Okay. When you're treating something like that, you want to spend five to seven minutes. Yes. Minutes. And right now with the second degree skills, you're going to be able to spend a little bit less. But if the problem is serious, by all means, give, give the person the time and the energy. It will make a big difference. OK, so now I'm doing the other side. All right. Now moving on to the second pattern, and I like to try to touch something like the shoulder so the energy continues to flow into the body as I move about the table. Take tissue for cleanliness. The tissue over the eye thing, that's like, if they, like, do you present that and they say, no, okay, I'm comfortable? Then don't use it. Don't use it. Some people don't like to have anything over the eyes, but offer it. For, I'm sorry, Elle? How do you say, can I put a tissue over your eye for Yeah, or, or say, I'm just going to place some tissue over your eyes. I usually say that. And maybe once or twice somebody has said, oh, no, I don't want anything over my eyes. Most of the time they'll be okay with it. But bring the tissue over to the temple first so that your connection is here. Notice how I have the shoulder. I'm making a connection here to the shoulder, and I'm just making a a shift of energy, a transfer of energy from the body, from the torso to the head. Then I'll drape the tissue over the eyes and start. Placing both hands over the eyes, thumbs touch, fingertips line up with the ends of the nostrils. You're working on over the eyes, any eye uh, type of problem, sinuses, nasal cavities, the uh, brain itself, the pituitary gland, and the pineal glands. The second position is on the temple. So have your hands forward of the external ear, thumbs in, fingertips line up with the ends of the earlobe. This is for everything in position number one plus the inner and middle ear. Position number three is on the back of the head. Roll the head to one side with your other hand come right underneath the skull and have your fingertips right over the edge just like that and with your other hand bring the head back to the center and balance. Place both, both hands together and make a little nest for the back of the head here. This is number three, and this is for the brain stem, the ancient reptile-like part of the brain. So you're working on the hunger and thirst, the sleep cycle, mood swings, happy one moment, sad the next, respiration rate, the heartbeat. Okay. Both are, both are. This is for the part of the brain that has uh, some control over the heart. Yeah. Okay, now, the visual cortex is back here as well. So you are working on the brain's ability to see what we, see, what we bring in from through our eyes as sight. To move to number four, open up your palms, take out one hand at a time. Turn it over so that it's flat parallel to the floor and bring the hand out to touch either the chin or the chest, but never the throat itself. 
if you were to place your hand directly on the person's throat, it could feel very harsh and invasive. So instead, keep the hand either touching the chin or the chest. Once you feel the connection, bring out your other hand and overlap. Make sure that your hands are flat, not angled. If your hands were angled like mine are right now, you would only be treating the chin. You, you want your hands to be flat and extend all the way down to the throat, all the way down to the base of the neck here. You're treating the airway, the food way, salivary glands, lymph nodes, and also the thyroid gland. You're treating metabolism, and you're treating the uh, parathyroid glands. The, the parathyroid gland is made up of four little glands about the size of a grain of rice each, and they serve to balance our calcium and phosph phosphorus level in the body. Okay, so these are the four standard positions. Let's review the optional positions really quickly. The first one I like to review is the ear and side of neck. And who remembers what this one is for? Anyone? Tinnitus is one of the things. Hmm? Tinnitus. Tinnitus, tinnitus, very good. So this is for tinnitus, ear infections. Vertigo. Vertigo. It's also for blood pressure because it covers the uh, carotid artery. The carotid artery brings blood up to the brain and it has chemicals that control blood pressure. So this position is for blood pressure. It also addresses problems with plaque buildup in the artery that can affect the flow of blood to the brain. So it's for stroke and for blood pressure as well. Okay, the next position is called the headset. The heels of my hands are together and my hands are going to run over the top of the head from one ear to the other. Who remembers what this is for? This is for the motor muscle function. Motor no muscle function. Very good, Sean. <laughs> this is the part of the brain that, in, that uh, helps um, the brain and muscles communicate. So if your muscles are not <coughs> communicating properly with your brain, then use this position. It's great for stroke, Lou Gehrig's disease, MS, MS, MS any time that the brain and the muscles are not communicating. All right. Let's do one for the mouth. This is for, uh, this is bridge over the mouth. Place the tissue over the mouth and then place your hands in the form of a bridge over the mouth. Don't have your hand directly on the mouth itself, but just be slightly above it. And this is for any time there's a problem with the mouth. Dental work that you just had, um, teeth, gum, tongue, lip, cold, uh, cold blister or sore. Yeah, you can, you can do a bridge. For the throat, you're going to still touch something, either the chin or the chest. Okay, the next one is the neck cradle. Have your thumbs out of the way, come in from both sides so that your hands rest underneath the neck like a platform, okay? Just relax your hands and let them fall underneath the neck. This position is for any type of neck problem, whether it's uh, muscle, bone, disc, or nerve. Next, we'll do the shoulder melt. I'm going to come in underneath the shoulder blades, and this is the most delicious position we have in Reiki. If you haven't tried it, please do. Ask your partner to do the shoulder melt. So I want to come in right underneath the shoulder blades. Okay, here we go, David. And it's okay to ask your partner to help you adjust your hands so that they're just right. How are my hands, David? They're, they're right. <laughs> they're right. 
<laughs> this addresses uh, s uh, upper back muscles, so upper back tension, and the back of the lungs and the back of the heart and the back of the thymus. Okay, next position is the shoulder sandwich. I'm going to show, uh, sandwich the shoulders in between my hands. So one hand underneath the shoulder, the other hand on top. This is a great position for any type of rotator cuff uh, problem. And then if you do one side, make sure that you do the other side. Takara used to say, you can create optional positions anywhere on the body. So if your client has a, position, a problem down the arm, it's okay for you to create an optional position there. So anywhere on the body, you can create an optional position. Yes, B. Mm -hmm. by the three positions, so I would just make up my own going down the arm just to make sure that I get the back that line. If you have the time, that would be fine. Okay. If you have the time, that would be fine. It's more important for you to do the core of the body, the center of the body, because you're addressing the internal organs and you're addressing the principal chakras. But it would be okay for you if you have sufficient time to work on the arms or the legs. If, mm -hmm. if Would it make sense to continue working where the chakras would be, like the knee and the foot? Yes. Because time and space-wise, whether the physical body is mm -hmm. there. And the energy blueprint is there, and I can show you. I have, uh, mm -hmm. I do Kirlian photography, and uh, I have a Kirlian photograph of an amputated finger, someone who lost a finger, okay? And I have the energy finger on film. So if I have time later uh, tomorrow, I'll show you. It's kind of like phantom pain. Yeah. Right, and that's why I was asking. Exactly, you. exactly. I show that. I show that in the aura workshop. Yeah, and you can learn how to see it. Okay. All right. So let's go on to the third pattern. In a very gentle way, in a very gentle way. But you know, it's so important to do the back because you're working on the chronic side of conditions on the back. And oh boy, it feels good to have energy on your back. So it, it's worth turning, turning over. Here we go, David. Do you need something underneath your ankles? Nope. Okay, so let's divide the body into three sections here. Shoulder to the waistline, waistline to the end of the torso, and then we have the legs and feet. Use the spine as your center line to guide your hands. Find C7, the large bump at the top of the shoulder, and place your hands just below C7. Make sure that your fingers or the heels of your hands are aligned with the midline here, okay? And you can start on either side of the uh, position one or two, either side of the back. So here you're working over the back of the heart, the back of the lungs, the back of the breast, and the back of the thymus gland. That's one and two. Underpass now to three and four. And you're working over the back of the digestive system. So the back of the stomach, pancreas, liver, gallbladder, spleen. But you're also working over the kidneys and adrenal glands. So that's three and four. If you find 
You have a space in the small of the back. You can use that space and cover it. You're allowed to make up as many optional positions as you need in order to reach the waistline. And for David, I'll make up one optional position. I'll make a long pad with an overlap and call it 4A. And that brings me to the waistline. Notice that how I'm moving my body so that I'm always centered with my hands. Okay, now for number five, I'm going to come down to just below the waistline. I'm just below the waistline. Number five is a long pad with an overlap. We're working on the um, L4 and 5 and the head of the sciatic nerve. We also are giving energy to the back of intestines here. Number six, bring your top hand to the center so you're covering L4 and 5 again and make a little pocket so that your other hand can slip into that pocket. Now you are, have a T position and you're covering the coccyx, sacrum, L4 and 5. You're giving energy to the back of the female reproductive system, bladder, intestines, and you're just about an inch and a half away from the male prostate gland. Okay, now we go to number 7, back of the knees. And remember that any time that you want to, you can just cup one knee at a time and treat that knee individually. So you're working on the back of the knees, the back of the knee subchakra. And finally, you're going to come to the feet. By the way, if your client has uh, dirt on the feet, maybe he's uh, barefoot, barefooted, or has uh, all kinds of dog hair on his socks <laughs> that were pr dropped by a dog that we all know well, you can cover the, uh, the feet with a sheet or tissue. It's okay to cover the feet. And here you're working on the um, reflex points on the bottom of the feet, reflex points that correspond to all the glands and organs in the body. So remember, You've delivered a lot of energy to the glands and organs. Now you're working on decongesting the reflex points and grounding the energy. If your client has long feet, start with the heel and then work your way down toward the toe. So st always start with the heel and make sure that you're doing both feet at the same time. That way the energy grounds evenly. You don't want to ever ground one foot and then ground the other feet because the energy will be like this. So even at the same time, ground the heels and come down to the toes. Okay. If you ever have to go back up the body because you forgot that you wanted to do more on the knee or on the hand, it's okay to do that, but come down to the feet and always end on the feet. Oh. Hmm? Sorry, yes, Sean. I know I, I've read a bunch of different people's books and stuff, and they, some people say that they try and visualize different things, and other people say that you just need to let, let it do its thing. Um, do you ever find yourself visualizing, you know, taking energy into your body and spelling it out your hands, or do you just let it happen? Let it happen, but uh, however, I'm going to teach you how to work with the mental emotional energy and that's where you, you can visualize, that's where you can talk to the body. So there is a place to do that uh, correctly and I'm going to teach you how. Otherwise you really want to be a clear channel and by you being a clear channel that means that you want to step out of the way, completely step out of the way, be present and be unconditional so the energy can do its work because if you're trying to use breath and direct the energy, then you're not allowing the cells in the body to take what they need. Be present and, and do connect. I mean, there is, there's a difference 
you know, I'll show you the difference, if I may. If I, may I touch you? Yes. <coughs> There's a difference between placing your hands like this and placing your hands like this. Watch. Mm -hmm. Which way feels mo more present? The second. first, the second. So that's how you want to place your hands. You want to be there and you want to be present. And your intention is to be present. The first um, time I did it, I was just on the surface. The second time I was there, I was present mm -hmm. and I got out of the way so that the energy could penetrate. So in a way, I'm below the, f I'm just um, on the fascia. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm a little bit below the skin so that the energy can pass through. And it's just the intention of being present and then stepping out of the way and letting the energy do its work. No, you can do one hand at a time. The only thing that you really need to do at the same time are the feet. Yes. Mm -hmm. and the first one was going down to the feet. Yeah. And when we finished, we finished at the same time. So like I was at the feet, Kim was just wrapping up her last pose of the head and mm -hmm. just wrapping up something like that. So was that okay? Or were they supposed to finish and then I was supposed to be last and then I... Okay, so let me show you how to finish. So if, uh, if I can have you guys come up here with me. And Elle, you want to be at the feet? And this is good for you guys anytime that you are practicing and ground the feet and do that. And how about if we have Kay right over here and come over here so we can get you on film. Very good. So you're working in a session. Maybe you've come to our wellness center and uh, which we're starting on the 9th and we're going to have tables and a bunch of people and there will be all kinds of fun. So it'll be great to, you know, if you can come. And uh, there'll be tables and people will be coming to your table to receive Reiki. Sometimes there will be two and three and even four practitioners at each table. The person that is highest on the body, meaning highest toward the head, always lets go first. And then you let go like dominoes, starting with K and let go B. And then L, you let go last. So the person on the feet always lets go last. Mm -hmm. And then together, all three of you, let's move the energy over the top. Very nice. Okay, so that's the protocol when you're working with a group.